Welcome to Piano Video Lessons. I'm Lisa, and today we're working on Grade 1 Piano Technical Exercises and Etudes. This is Unit 1 of Year 2 for Piano Video Lessons. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning to play The Elevator by Kohler. And you can see here that this is on page 12 of your ebook, and the study notes are on page 13. You can just click the info card up here to come on over to pianovideolessons.com if you're not there already. So the previous piece that we learned was two video lessons ago, and that was the, a, the study, or etude. Uh, etude is French for study, so these words are interchangeable, but this is the study Study in C by Czerny, and you can see it was a quite short piece, only eight measures long, only two lines. But when we play this piece, we're going to look for patterns, just as we did with our Czerny piece. So I'm going to get this one out of the way, and we'll get started. So every etude has a specific technical skill that it's trying to enhance or develop in the performer. And in this piece, you see the right hand is working on playing scale runs. And you see a lot of scale passages in the right hand, and I guess also here in the left hand. But we're going to be looking at execution of even and clear scale runs. And then also we see staccato notes played by left hand um, and right hand in this piece. We have a little bit of dynamic changes, but I would say that generally speaking the two technical elements we're looking at here are legato scale passages and played at the same time as staccato in the other hand. That's a little bit challenging so let's just look at that first. What is happening here at the very beginning is you're going to have uh, one note, it's actually the other way around, one hand that's bouncing while the other hand is holding and in the next uh, section here it's the same idea we've got the right hand is going to hold the left is going to bounce next line we're gonna have the same idea and here in the middle of the line again same thing then on the next line it switches so we're gonna have the right hand bouncing while the left hand is playing legato that's the middle of the line now we're gonna go down here and then that's the last time it happens because here we have a nice little running pentascale. So the ending here is actually quite simple in comparison to the rest of the piece. So let me just play the whole thing for you so you can hear how it goes. Right, so lots of things to watch out for. I might have made it look easy. It always looks easy when someone else does something, but if you try it and it's bad, that's okay. Just keep trying it until it's better. Um, if you just dedicate maybe 15 minutes every day to improving this piece, it will get somewhere. If you're 1% better every day, in 100 days you will be 100% better. In fact, even sooner than that. But Let's give this um, a little bit of an analysis to see what's going on. Let's take it hands separately at first, and you're going to see the very first thing we play on the right hand starts on C, and it runs down a C scale. So I think it's a good idea in any piece of music to find the starting notes for each group each new starting position and just practice finding those with the given finger. So in the first part here it says 5 on C and then the next finger 5 is in the top space E. Then we have our 5 starting on D and our 5 starting on C. So our hand does move around a little bit in this first part of the piece. And it's important to know what those starting notes are. The rest of it you can read by interval, and you'll see it goes space, line, space, line, space, line, space, line, space. And so we're moving down by neighbors, and we're going to hold for a ta, ti, 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 ta. It starts with a quarter note, and then it runs down eighth notes, two and three and four and one, 
So one, two, three, four, one, rest, three, four. 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 So we're making sure we come off for the rest because the left hand is going to get a little solo right in here. Uh, let's just stick with the first two lines and have a look at the left hand. So left hand, we start off with fingers three and five, staccato on C with E, and then we wait. And then after the right hand is done, we come in with the same notes and we play on beats two, three, four, then we bounce on a fifth. So this is just the C triad, but it's sort of being broken down a little bit, deconstructed. So the bottom of the C triad rests to now the outside of the C triad rest. Now we go down here. Ooh, so now we have, we had a fifth, two space notes. Now we still have the top space note with our thumb, but this bottom note has opened down to a line note. So now we have a sixth. Two, three, four, rest. Two, three, and now four and two. Now my finger four here is going to land right beside my finger five. So I had this open sixth, and my four is ready with C, and then I have the rest here, and then three C's repeating, and they're all staccato. So, so far, everything the left hand is playing is bouncy, staccato. Now, the right hand has scale passages, and you would assume that they're all just major scales, and they kind of are, but there's a little catch here. So here we have the C scale using standard scale fingering. Then the next thing that we're going to do is place our five on E, and we're going to play down the notes and end on E. So that's not an E scale. It's not an E major or minor scale. It's an E modal, modal scale. But for now, we're just going to think of this as a C scale beginning on E. So we're using the notes of the C scale beginning on E, and then we're going to move to D. And that's also not a D major or minor scale, that's a D modal scale, so it's a C scale from D to D. And then we finish here with C and play a C major scale. So in case you're wondering what the names of these modal scales are, there are, um, there are eight, di seven different modes, and major is one of the modes. We call that Ionian mode. Uh, when we start on the third note, it's called Phrygian mode. So we don't use that to write a lot of music, but sometimes music is written in Phrygian mode. So that's E Phrygian. And then we have, if you're starting on the D on the second note of a major scale, that is Dorian mode. So this is Dorian. It is used to write music, but less commonly. And then we're finishing here with a C scale, C major, or C Ionian mode. Okay, so now let's go back and try the first two lines with both hands. So we're just going to focus at first on how to execute this beginning section. So get used to playing just those first notes with the left hand coming off and a bounce. I'm exaggerating. You just have to bounce them. You can stay close. Lift the right, and the left takes a turn. Now we're going to go to the next one. We're going to bounce the left, lift the right, left finishes. Now we're going to play both together here. So this is a bit of a, of a, of a challenge. I'm going to put a little star right here. This is a good spot for you to give a little bit of extra attention because it's at the end of a line and both hands have to do something different. So I'm just going to play back from here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So there's your E. Now, the left hand's just opening, but the right hand is also going up to D. Lift. So let's go back to this here. We play E, and we're going to go up and open at the same time. E, up and open. E, up and open. We're bouncing. So lift, bounce, move, bounce the left. So lift, bounce, move, bounce. And then you might want to play it very slowly, just like this. Move the right, bounce the left. Lift, bounce, move the right, bounce the left. Lift, bounce, get ready.
So during the time when you have these repetitions in the left hand, you should be preparing your right hand to move. So as soon as you're done playing that C, start moving your five to its correct note. That way you're already on this note before you need to play the left hand. Same thing here. Start getting ready to place your five up here on D. Same thing here. Start getting your five ready for C. And we're going to do exactly the same practice mechanism strategy for the second half of this piece. So first let's just look at the right hand. We're going to play fingers one and three. And then we're going to repeat that again. And we're going to go up to these notes, two and four. And then we're going to move our hand and we're going to put our one and three on the same notes we just had. There's a reason. It's to make this easier. Because it's if we've just played these notes, it's easy to play them again with a different finger. If we stayed on four and two, and then we had to hop and find a new interval, that's a little tricky. It can be done, but it's easier if you try this fingering. So four and two, while you're waiting, move over your three and one. Then you just have to change fingers without moving, and then bounce, reach, and open. Now the left hand has a C major scale. And then we're going to move down to F. All right, so this is a Lydian scale, F, F Lydian, using the notes from C major. Now we have G, and then we have C pentascale. And this is Mixolydian, since you wanted to know. <laughs> I know you didn't really care. We're just using the white keys, and we're playing starting on different starting notes. I'm just hoping you notice that these are not the major scales, because we know that G major has an F sharp, and we're not playing one. And we also know that um, F major would have a B flat, and we're not playing one. So we're not playing major scales. We're playing C scales starting on different starting notes, different home notes. So let's go back now slowly and put this together. First we're going to bounce the right, we're going to lift the right, now we're moving the left while we're bouncing. Now bounce the right, and we're moving to one and three, now the left moves to F, and lift. All right, so I'm going to take it back from here again. We've got bounce on the right, lift, bounce, moving the left, bouncing the right, getting the right ready with your three, getting the left ready, bounce the right, lift, bounce, and a nice easy finish, pentascale with a right hand sixth. Whoosh, all right. so. I think it's important to look through all of these elements of the piece and just really be comfortable with them in slow tempo before putting them together. Um, it doesn't look like a hard piece, but it has a lot going on. It's got a lot of hand position shifts. It's got a lot of articulations that have to be executed properly in each hand. So let's have a quick look here at the um, at the sheet that goes with this. The um, I call it the study notes, and we'll just quickly go through the things that are on here. So it says you'll know that you've learned this piece when you can play it with all correct notes and rhythm using consistent and practical fingers with a steady beat lifting the rests in the left hand while well, actually lifting the rests in either hand and bouncing the staccato notes, observing the dynamics and playing smooth and even scale passages. So there were two different dynamics. We didn't really talk about that. It starts off softly and then it moves into mezzo forte. So we'll watch for that. So here are some practice tips. It says work on the scales first. Play the right hand alone for lines one and two and then the left hand for lines three and four. So what that would look like is beginning at the start, Playing just the right hand, moving to E, moving to D, moving to C, then get your left hand ready, playing on C, moving down to F, moving to G, and then finishing with your pentascale. And then it says next to work on the accompaniment pattern. So in, instead of starting with right hand, we'll start with left. So we have three, five, two, three, four, one, three, two, 
three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Now finger four and two. Now we're moving over. One, two, three, four, one. All right, and it says here also, to improve with playing one hand legato with the other hand staccato, do some simple pentascales using these articulations. So what that means is think of playing one hand up and down legato and the other hand up and down staccato at the same time. So that will go like this. And then you could switch it. It's not easy. You can go slowly. And I've given a suggestion here on how to handle leaps that cause you to stop or play wrong notes. There's a little practice strategy called countdown where you actually allow yourself to take a break while you're getting yourself set up for the next thing. So for example, where the star is here, if you had one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, you gave yourself lots of time and you could go back and do it again, but this counting down four, three, two, one, and then you would do it again. Three, two, one. Notice I'm counting down from a lower number each time. Two, one. And one last time. Ready. So it shortens up the amount of time that you let yourself think on those tricky spots. And also it's important to count when you play to keep your rhythm steady. Or you could use rhythm words. So uh, rhythm words could be ta ti 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 ta 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 ti 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 ta. So the words I'm using there uh, for the quarter note, I'm saying ta. And for the eighth notes, I'm saying ti ti. And those are standardly used musical um, nicknames. Then we can also use other words. In another lesson, I talked about dog and puppy. And you can also use words like walk for your ta or quarter note and running for your eighth notes. Walk, running, 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 walk, walk, walk walk, keeping a beat steady. Or you can simply count using one and, two and. So that would go, let's do the walk running. Walk, running, 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 walk, 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 running, 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 walk, 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 running, 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 walk, 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 running, 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 walk, walk, now I'm going to switch for the second half of the piece and I'm going to say one and two and. So one and two and three and four and 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 two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So whatever makes you happy as long as your beat keeps going. I recommend recording yourself at various stages of practicing and double check all of these things. Double check whether or not you're uh, playing the right notes. Double check whether you have any gaps in your tempo. Double check whether or not you're lifting the rests. Double check your staccatos. Double check if you're playing piano and mezzo forte. All of these things are very important. All right, in our next lesson, we're gonna have a nice, simple lesson on playing the C major scale in contrary motion. So we're gonna get the hands playing at the same time, moving in different directions. So come on back for that lesson, and I'm gonna play the elevator one more time as we end this lesson. <laughs>